On that eventful day of August 27, 1859, Edwin Drake and his associates ushered in a new era. It had now been shown that oil in substantial quantities could be obtained by drilling. What are the positives of oil and gas? It's created the way of life that every American enjoys today. I don't think there's any doubt that the oil and gas industry has provided uh, jobs uh, to New Mexico in a significant way. It's a finite resource. Everybody gets that. Um, we have a, we're awash in it now because of this technology boom. And I mean, and that's American ingenuity, you know, and I don't think it's anything from where I sit and, and stand, I, I think I'm proud of, of what a lot of people in our industry have done and what we've allowed, you know, uh, our country to be. Oil and gas has been a significant part of the New Mexico economy almost from the beginnings of the industry in the state, and that would have been 1924. Certainly by the 1940s, it was a major part of the economy, and we now depend on it very heavily. The energy sector is a major contributor to these United States. And you start getting into regions and, and very specific basins, uh, and you're going to see the benefits in terms of uh, revenues uh, by large corporations um, who are active in those uh, basins and those regions, uh, from the tax and from the royalty and from donations and, and from job creation. We still have uh, 75 to 100 employees. It's still a good place to be in the oil and gas industry. Uh, in uh, southeast New Mexico. You look at the uh, communities uh, the, up in the northwest and the southeast, uh, they're booming in many cases when the other parts of the state aren't. You know, the oil and gas industry really growing up brought me my heroes, the people that I grew up with and looked up to, and their can-do attitudes, what they could do, how they you know, brought the field to life. And, dealt with all the challenges. There was so much to learn from them. And we can't deny that as part of our history. It hasn't worked out in the long run exactly like a fairy tale, but what does? How did New Mexico become uh, so tied to the oil and gas business, I guess is the main thing, or extractive industries? Um, uh, I guess it's because there used to be an ancient sea that flowed through here, and uh, that's what it left us. It may be hard to imagine today, but at one point, the state was the bottom of the ocean. And so this ancient sea left behind all kinds of organic matter that got buried and over time uh, turned into oil and gas deposits. In the northwest part of the state, that's primarily natural gas. And it's one of the country's biggest natural gas basins uh, in terms of production. In the southeast corner of the state, that deposit is primarily oil, although there's a significant amount of natural gas um, associated with it as well. We have two just marvelous basins, uh, the San Juan Basin and the Permian Basin at uh, different ends of the state and those basins have been tremendously productive over time. New Mexico produces a great deal of oil and gas for the size of a state we are. In 1970, we reached a peak at 126 million barrels a, a year. In 2016, we produced 146 million barrels a year. And in 2017, it's right at 170 million barrels a year. So production is not only uh, continued, it's continued to increase, especially in recent years. In the beginning, uh, dating back to the, the Civil War, actually, uh, fracking was done using explosives. And uh, they basically sent explosives down straight into the well and exploded them to try to get more oil and gas out of the rocks, and it worked that way for quite some time. I mean, we've been hydraulic fracturing wells for years. That is nothing new. There's been a well hydraulically, you know, being fracked somewhere in the United States 
24 hours a day, seven days a week for the last 50 years. But what's new is the horizontal drilling, which actually is, has been going on for a while too, but it's the combination of the two. What's different and what's new is that there's been a combination of new technology with increased hydraulic fracking and it has changed the ball game because now people can go into these organic rich shales and they can drill horizontally uh, a mile sometimes two miles and then blast it with high pressure water and chemicals and extract the 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 gas that way and that's changing the oil and gas business because it's a very low risk type of a thing as far as hitting commercial hydrocarbons if we were still taking as long to drill a well and had the primitive ways of uh, producing a well that we had, say, 75 years ago, uh, I don't know what the price of gasoline would be, maybe $20 a gallon. We just wouldn't be able to, to afford to, to uh, use it for transportation or uh, generating electricity or anything. People wouldn't have the conveniences that they do uh, because of the, the technology and, and the advancement that the oil and gas industry have made. So in some ways, um, the, the, the uh, price crash in uh, natural gas uh, that's led to a lot of uh, economic problems in New Mexico's San Juan Basin, it's really uh, a problem of, of the oil and gas industry being a victim of its own success in some ways. That overproduction uh, led to a decrease in prices. It's just plain old economics of supply and demand. The San Juan Basin produces mainly gas, natural gas not oil. And the price of natural gas is very low, and so there's no real boom in the San Juan Basin. In fact, Farmington, which is the biggest city in San Juan County, has been losing population and losing jobs, uh, and it is because of the low price of natural gas. Like all other industries, um, we're doing it with less and less people all the time, even in oil and gas. You know, we've lost about 6,500 jobs in oil and gas alone. And that will never come back because even if we were operating the 30 or 40 rigs that we used to, they're doing it with about half the people that they used to now. Uh, so everything we're doing is far more efficient than it used to be. So New Mexico's economy is struggling right now. Um, the one sector of our economy that's doing extremely well is oil and gas production. Um, oil and gas is, our production of oil and gas is at record levels, but the employment in oil and gas is not going up as fast as oil production because the drillers are getting more efficient using technology, automation in their systems. So you see the oil production going way up and the jobs are not quite going up. And so, you know, I worry that we're not getting the sort of economic benefit out of oil and gas that you would think we would if you look at our production numbers. I think we've seen a, a significant boom and bust cycle. You know, when oil price is high, uh, the state's doing well, the revenue for the state is coming in. Uh, when it is low, uh, we, we're, we're in bad shape and everybody starts fighting because we don't have enough in terms of revenue. Oil prices are not sky high like they were a few years ago, but they're high enough that it's leading to a big boom in, in the oil development in, in southeastern New Mexico's Permian Basin. The, the Permian Basin is booming right now. The price of oil has gone from $20 a barrel, $26 a barrel in 2016, to $65 a barrel uh, today. If you go back, oh, about 40 years now, half of the revenue for the state of New Mexico was from oil and gas. Just a few weeks ago, we were projecting a $200 million budget surplus. Now it has already grown to over $330 million. Maybe we should give a big chunk of that back to the taxpayers.
The current budget situation shows that we have a little over $300 million in what is called new money. New money is the difference between last year's state appropriations and the revenue estimates for the coming year. It is entirely dependent on the recovery in the oil and gas industry. Uh, I think it'll probably last through the next fiscal year, but it could disappear in an instant. We are more dependent on oil and gas revenues because a very large portion of the state budget is funded through the oil and gas industry. One of the things that we've done to make it even worse is we've adopted this tax cut to prosperity model that clearly has not worked. And by that I mean we've offered large corporate income tax cuts, we've offered large personal income tax cuts in the hope that that will somehow mean a vibrant economy. That hasn't worked. It's been a terrible failure. And because of that, our state general fund continues to struggle, which means we don't have the dollars to invest in our K-12 education system. There's no doubt that the oil and gas industry has benefited New Mexico, but those benefits have come with a cost. And there's been costs to our communities, to our wildlife, to our culture, and to our landscape. And going forward, we have to weigh those costs against the benefits that the industry provides. It should be the goal of everyone involved to, be, to, to establish good relationships. And moving forward, we should establish a good relationship between the industry and the people of the state of New Mexico. I guess what I'd like to see in New Mexico is I think we have so many opportunities because of, of not just natural resources, the extractive industry, but we have so much beauty here and so many things to offer. I, I, think, I think we have the best of everything if we can manage it right, if we come together and, and have agreements on, on how best to develop the recreation, the tourism, the natural resources that we have. You know, we, we have everything we need to be an extremely successful state. <music>